every mountain that is high come on he is higher for every burden that is great he is greater for every valley that is deep he is deeper still more than we can know come on our promise is jesus our promise is jesus our answer is jesus all to him all to him we owe everything our savior is jesus our future is jesus all to him all to him we fear for every fear that closes in he is closer for every doubt that comes on strong he is stronger for every battle that we face he has conquered all and more than Oh 
double keys. Come on, let's sing it out together. Here we go. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. come to you thanking you for all that you are for the breath that you've given us we just want to give back to you today because you are worthy you are holy and we lift you up thank you lord thank god thank king you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness give hope you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Sing it out together this morning. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Thank you. You give life, 
Just join together as we sing this line. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Yes, you are worthy. Yes, you are worthy. Great are you, Lord. Oh, you're wonderful. Yes, you're wonderful. seat just for a moment. And like I've said before, you know, I look forward to this part of our service. I look forward to when we get to take communion together because united under one name, uh, we all just look to Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. You see, this morning we can sing that God is good, not because all of our lives are perfect, 
not because everything goes our way or not just because if, if we say that we're Christians and all of a sudden life is just magically great. <laughs> we still live in this fallen world. We still live in sin. We still live in sickness and, and death and, and frustration. But you see, we can sing that God is good because of what he did for us on the cross. That he is faithful, that his love endures, that his grace and mercy always covers us. That no matter what we've done, no matter our past, that God says you are forgiven in Jesus' name. And that's why God came to die in the form of Jesus. He came as Jesus to die on the cross for us. To hang on that cross for our salvation. That his blood would cover us. So this morning, we're going to continue to sing about the goodness of God. And, and I encourage you, maybe you don't feel like that. But to sing that out because he is good. To sing that out to know that he is good. Because the Bible says that he is love. Not that he just loves, but he is love. So as the guys come out and pass communion, you can feel free to take those when you're ready. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I never You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And I've seen many searching for that. For answers only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am.
who you are, it's who you are, I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, yes you're so good. God, this morning we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. This morning we're sorry for the things that we've done. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your healing. We thank you for your grace and mercy. To know that you make us a new creation. You give us life and life abundantly. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat. A significant number of kids in our community are on free or reduced lunch programs. This means when they are at school, they can generally receive two free meals a day. But when school is not in session, these kids go hungry, especially over Thanksgiving, Christmas, and spring break. In an effort to provide for the children in our area, Oasis Church and other churches have joined the mission. We have partnered with Liberty Point Elementary School in Pueblo West to provide backpacks full of food to send home with needy children. We have committed to provide 100 backpacks this spring break to send home with specifically identified children. Each backpack will provide that individual child with five days of non-perishable, kid-friendly breakfast items, lunch items, and snacks to help supplement their meals when they're not in school. We are asking you for donations of food items to fill the backpacks. These items will be listed on our website, Oasis app, and in your bulletin. You can bring your items in on Sundays to Connecting Point. Together, we can make sure no child goes hungry in our community. gates and walls made out of gold with Jesus sitting in the middle. Rainbow flowers. Um, like God is there and we get to have fun with him.
morning, church. <laughs> hey, great to see everybody this morning. Glad you're here to worship with us. Uh, and I just want to make sure that you're getting connected and getting to meet people in the church. One of the difficult things in going to church is just being able to get connected with the body. So we always try to do a lot of things to assist with that. For example, our neighborhood groups start next Sunday. If, if you've never been a part of our groups before, if this is your first time, groups are for you. What do we do at a group? We got a map up here, by the way. We had another additional group added this past week and um, with child care. So you can look at the pictures. You can go out. You can, you can get registered day with your app if you download your app. Uh, church app. You can talk to people at the table uh, and see what group might fit your schedule. But we get together. What we're going to do, we're studying uh, Foreigner next Sunday. And the Sunday messages, I'll be giving uh, the groups questions to be able to discuss during the week at group. So you get together, you read scripture, you pray for one another and grow together in the Lord. So that's what groups are all about, about 60 to 90 minutes, one time a week for eight weeks. So if you've never participated in that, we really encourage you just to jump in and do that. Uh, also, uh, the baby bottle campaign for a caring pregnancy center is officially over. If you can get those baby bottles in full of uh, change and we'll get those back to ACPC, we support them in this way with the baby bottle campaign every year. We also are starting a brand new outreach and uh, coordination with Liberty Point School. Uh, so check out how you can do that. I believe there's information in the bulletin. Also, we have opportunities to serve in the church uh, on your way out. We have a table highlighting a couple of different ministries as well. Uh, so today we're in this final message in this series about the afterlife. What's going to happen when we close our eyes and this life is over, right? We've been talking about um, a variety of things. We started out talking about that when this life is over, one out of one person dies. That's the statistic. It's going to happen. And uh, we started out talking about the afterlife. We talked about judgment. We talked about for the Christian, those who are in Christ, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, how many of you were with us last week? See, right? Some hand? Yeah. We went to hell last week. Um, we did, right? I got good news for you today. We're going to go to heaven. And uh, one of the things, yeah, we should be pumped up about that. But we learned last week to, that the devil tries to deceive us and to convince us that hell's not a real place. If it is, don't worry about it. But we learned that for those who are not in Christ, who are not following Christ, to be absent from the body is to begin pain and suffering uh, immediately in the afterlife. So today we're going to talk about is heaven for real? And I know some people are like, I don't want to talk about death. Why are we talking about this for three weeks? in a row. Why are we talking about this? Well, this is the key theme for all three of these messages, and that is what we believe really about eternity will determine how we will live today. If you're filling in your outline, you've not written that down, or you don't have what you believe about eternity determines how you live today. So uh, we've got a video. There's a lot of people with a lot of different views about the afterlife and how you get there, even if it's real at all. Check out this video we have. Uh, I do not believe in heaven. Uh, and, um, you know, a lot of people say that you have to believe in God and uh, pray and, you know, accept Jesus into your life to go to heaven. And it's like, if you don't, you're a bad person. Well, I'm a good person. Like, I'm a outstanding citizen, you know, good student. Uh, so if there is a heaven, hopefully I'll go in there if, you know, even if I don't believe in God. First, sir, could you... Heaven is by believing in Christ and to uh, be obedient to his ways and to read the word. I'm not sure that I believe in a, in a heaven anymore. Um, I'm not sure even that I believe in an afterlife, but I do believe in being good while we're here and alive and being, you know, spreading goodwill and being good to one another. Um, but that's something that I think I'm, I'm sort of struggling with. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Maybe not, because I just use Jesus' name in vain. I've been saved and I've been baptized and I go to try to go to church every week and read my Bible and stuff. I guess I believe in God and I believe that like after life he brings us to a better place and you get to be like reunited with your loved ones. After my decision making lately, I might have some repenting to do, but I definitely think that I'm going to heaven because I'm an overall good guy, good person, you know, um, have a good attitude and I believe in God and I go to church every once in a while. I don't know if I'm going to heaven. I think um, 
maybe if I the rest of my life I'm a, I'm a good person maybe I don't think this time in my life deter well I don't know maybe if I die tomorrow I feel like it's more complicated of a, of a topic than people actually think you know it's not just like oh if you do think good things you're gonna go to heaven I don't think it's as easy as that I don't know I think maybe your soul might carry on through something else, another form, another medium, maybe reborn into something else, or so kind of a reincarnation type thing. Maybe, or just like a recycling of energy. What I think it takes a person to get to heaven is number one, uh, confess that Jesus is God. Number two, um, live a life in which you are serving others, as if do unto others. You know your golden rules. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you and above all serve 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 this so world, be a good person and do good things oh yeah that absolutely. gets you into heaven yeah i think so too yeah so and of course you know we're going to bring in the baptism you know because he mentioned about the baptism so, so you got to be baptized to get yeah to heaven. you got to be baptized yeah so if there was a heaven what do you think it'd take to get there just being a good person it's pretty simple yeah so really, what you believe about eternity is going to impact how indeed you do live today. I mean, if you believe that you're here like by accident and you're, it's like, who cares when you die, you just go into the grave and that's it, you know, you're going to live for today. You're going to live for yourself. But if you really believe that you are created by God for his purposes and one day you're going to die and spend eternity somewhere, if you believe that, it will impact what and how you live today. So I want to talk about heaven, and I know I could not possibly do it justice, uh, just can't because the Bible writer actually says this in 1 Corinthians, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. So I know I can't do it justice, but we're going to let God's word again today do all the talking. We're going to read a lot of scripture today. So again, in honor of the reading of God's word, would you stand as we have for the past couple of weeks just for the reading of his word? And we're going to start with the words of Jesus. And especially if you're going through a dark season, a heavy season, a down season, I pray that the words of Jesus would lift you up. And as we think about eternity, I pray that these words would give you some incredible encouragement. We're going to start in John 14 when Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas, who never quite got it, uh, chimed up and Thomas said to the Lord, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So do not let your hearts be troubled. If he's been there like 2,000 years preparing this place, it's going to be awesome. Now, John, the Apostle John, has a vision, and he gets to see a glimpse of heaven and tries to explain it. We're going to read from Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. He said, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. What will God be doing? Look at this. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Those who are victorious will inherit all of this and I will be their God and they will be my children. Those of us who are victorious will inherit eternity in heaven. 
Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Father God, Father, I pray through the truth of your word, the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would help us to loosen our grip on this world so as to anticipate the glory, the glories of heaven, what is to come, and to live in such a way now that our lives would impact eternity. For he who was and is and is to come, the name of Jesus, we pray this. And all of God's people said amen and amen. Before you're seated, shake several hands of those around you and say, I plan on seeing you in heaven. I plan on seeing you in heaven. Plan on seeing you in heaven. Plan on seeing you in heaven, buddy. I plan on seeing you in heaven, amen and amen. So I wanna talk about heaven, uh, but really when I wanna talk to you about what heaven is not, there's a lot of people with, different, with misconceptions about what heaven's gonna be like. Uh, like, you know, when we go to heaven, we're gonna be little fat, bald baby angels with wings floating around on, on clouds, right, singing hymns, like stanzas one, two, and four, never three. I don't know why never three, but we're never gonna sing that for like thousands of years. Like there are a lot of misconceptions about heaven. So uh, hopefully what we learn will inspire us to, to live differently and to not just live for here, but to live for eternity. So one of the common misconceptions about heaven is that heaven's gonna be boring. It's just going to be flat out boring, right? I mean, why is it that so many people think heaven's going to be boring? Well, because the devil is the deceiver. He comes to confuse us. He is called Satan, the father of lies. And he's going to tell us that, you know what, heaven is boring. He, he is even named in the Bible, some believe, the name Lucifer, the angel of light is a name for Lucifer. There are three angels named in the Bible, Lucifer and Michael and Gabriel. Those are the three angels. But uh, so the, this angel of light, Lucifer, Satan, was this, in beauty, this beautiful creature but he had a problem. He wanted to be like God. He was jealous of God. He wanted to take everything God had and have it for himself. So he was cast out of heaven with a third of the angels. They went with him. Those are the demonic forces that we see on earth today. So what does Lucifer, Satan, the prince of darkness do? Well, he lies. He steals. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So if I were the devil... I would try to convince the world today what most of the world believes, that hell is not a real place, and if it is, don't take it seriously. And I would try to convince you, look, heaven is boring. If it's up there, everybody's going to go there, and it's just a boring place, so live for today. I mean, somewhere along the line, I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't come into the church till age 20. I had some concept of what heaven was gonna be like. I don't even know how I had it, but I dreamed like, okay, this life's over. I wanna be standing in this long, long, long line, floating on the clouds, waiting to get in the pearly gate. Peter's up there, what's he doing? He's checking off names, right? He's checking a list. And when I get up there, if I get to go in, he's gonna check my name off and give me a white robe. And then he's gonna give me either one of two things, a harp or a skateboard. Right? Yeah, because I heard a joke one time, there's some people gonna have skateboards in heaven. So I'm gonna, for, for eternity, I'm gonna like be playing a harp and riding a skateboard. That sounds boring to me. <laughs> that just doesn't sound all that exciting. I have no idea what you think about heaven, but why do so many people believe that it's boring? I think probably because they think God is a killjoy God, that, that he's just gonna take everything away from us that we would enjoy and have fun with. I think that's one of the reasons, but, but heaven is gonna be the opposite of boredom. It is gonna be a place where there is no evil, but there's gonna be the presence of God, so it's got to be the opposite of boredom. Boredom, I mean, when you, when you think about, just think about this earth, the things that we enjoy on this earth, everything that we have that, that's so good is really and truly a gift from God. I mean, go to your favorite place and eat your favorite food. I mean, I don't know about you, but last Sunday, was the official end of our 21-day all-church fast. Yes, woo, I did liquid only, 
for like 21 days, I watched as the sun went down over the mountains Sunday evening. When it went down, I grabbed a chip, and my wife made this awesome dip, and I dipped it in that, and, and I ate that, and when that hit my taste buds, they exploded in excitement, and I felt like I'd sinned. It was so good, and it didn't stop there. I kept on eating the night through, and it was awesome, but just think about our taste buds, our taste buds. The food that we enjoy is a gift from our God in heaven, or when you go to a beautiful place, and we get to see the glory of this creation, it's beautiful, and we can see that because we have eyes that can see all of that different stuff. It's, our eyes are a gift from heaven. Our feelings of joy, our feelings of love, our feelings of laughter, those are emotions that we feel because God has given us those gifts to be able to enjoy all these things just on this earth. And when you go to heaven, we're going to experience and enjoy like all this stuff, and it's, there's gonna be, it's gonna be without sin and without sorrow, without grief, without death. It's the absence of everything evil, and it's the presence of God. It's gonna, heaven's gonna be anything but boredom. So I wanna look through some passages. I've got the passages listed there, and I'm just gonna read about what they're about, just to get us some glimpse of heaven and what heaven what we know that it's going to be like from Scripture. So what's going to happen? What's it going to be like? Uh, first of all, we're going to know one another and love and be loved. We're going to recognize one another in heaven. So you'll be able to go up to Peter and say, bro, what was it like to walk on water? We'll be able to go up to, to David and say, dude, when you killed Goliath, was that all skill? Was it luck or was it all God? And women... If you had pain in childbirth, you're going to be able to walk up to Eve and go, woman, what were you thinking? <laughs> Was it worth it? We're going to know one another. We're going to be loved, and, and, and we're, going to, we're going to love people. And, and for those of you who have lost loved ones who are in Christ, you've lost a spouse, you've lost friends, uh, relatives, a child, we're going to be reunited with those people, and yet there's going to be no heartache, no pain, no sorrow, only perfect love. That's what heaven's going to be like. What's going to be like? It's also going to be a place of unimaginable beauty, unimaginable beauty. I mean, think about this. It, it, the Bible writer said, no, no eye has seen, no ears heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him, and that implies what? There might be some colors, some sen sensations some things about heaven that we don't even experience on this earth. The beauty is going to be unimaginable in this recreated world of heaven. I mean, if just think about the beauty of this earth. Boring? No. We could spend 10 years traveling over all the earth and visiting all the beautiful places just that we can see on this earth. And now imagine that without sin, without sorrow, without pain. There's this huge big old petting zoo, right? Where, where animals are living in harmony. They don't have to kill each other. The lion, the lamb, they're, they're lying down there. Petting zoo, harmony, right? I mean, think about the most beautiful place that you've ever been on earth. I remember my wife and I uh, riding our Harley from the West Coast back to Kentucky. We stopped at the Grand Canyon. We, we'd never, neither one of us had seen it before. And we parked the bike and we walked out to the edge and just looked over the Grand Canyon from the Southern Rim. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's on this earth. Heaven's going to be a place of unimaginable beauty. <clears throat> what else is heaven going to be like? In heaven, you will see Jesus face to face. And you know, you know why we didn't like shout for joy or our jaws didn't drop? Because we can't understand, we can't even imagine or fathom what it's going to be like to see Jesus face to face. Because in the Old Testament, you couldn't even look upon the glory of the Lord and live I mean, Moses told the Lord, let me see you, Lord. Let me see your glory. And God said, you can't handle my glory, but I want to go by and I want to let you see the tail end of me, right? Because if you were in the presence of God and you saw him, you would die in the tabernacle, in the temple. The, the priest went in or into the holy of holies where God dwelt once a year. And if he had any sin around him, the high priest would go into the holy of holies. They would tie a, a rope around his leg because if he went in and had any sinfulness in him, he would drop dead. 
And nobody else could go in and get him because they would drop dead too. So they, if he dropped dead, they'd have to haul that old boy out with a rope. Yeah, you, we cannot imagine seeing Jesus face to face in all of his glory and what that means. Because the first time that we, we lay eyes on him in Christ, we're going to realize how we didn't even live to the potential of living until we see him face to face. And those who are faithful will inherit that and will see Jesus face to face. In heaven, you'll have new and perfect bodies. Amen? Amen, <laughs> Amen right? Your grandma got sick. Her mind faded away. One day, you're going to see grandma again in heaven, and she's, she's going to be perfect in every way. Everything's going to be restored, right? Your receding hairline, poof. You're going to have hair. My large nose in heaven is going to be in perfect proportion to my head, right? Uh, you're, if you got, have migraines, whatever you suffer from in heaven, those things are, are going to go away. They, they're just going to go away. I, I can't wait to have perfect eyesight again because something happened to me when I was 42. I woke up and my, my eye was blurry. And at age 50, it got blurrier, right? And, and one day, I'm going to have perfect vision again. And, and we're going to see more than we've ever seen in heaven than we've ever seen on this earth. We're going to, be, we're going to have perfect bodies uh, in, in every way. What will heaven be like? It's going to be the absence of everything bad, everything evil, everything painful, and, and the presence of everything good and holy and glorious. Uh, based on Scripture, it, it, it appears that we will, like, be working for Jesus, and it's not going to be a curse it's going to be a blessing. So whatever our passions are on this earth, we're going to be doing those, serving the Lord in heaven. Like if you love gardening, you're going to be able to like produce these tomatoes that are like on steroids, you know, these huge tomatoes. Or if you like singing, you're just going to be able just to, to sing your heart out. Uh, there, we're going to have the, our gifts and our passions. We're going to be able to use those serving the Lord uh, in heaven. And it's going to be glorious. It's going to be productive. What's not going to be in heaven? Well, no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more grief, no more sickness, no more stress, no more depression, no more divorce, no more injustice, no more violence, no more getting up in the middle of the night and going to the bathroom, no more bad breath, no more Mondays. No more bad drivers. Woo! It's, it's going to be great. It's going to be the presence of everything good and the, and the absence of everything evil. Whatever we think of heaven, it's going to be better. It's going to be better. No eye has seen nor ear heard my, or mind conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. It's not going to be boring. It's not. Now, there's a second misconception. <clears throat> And that misconception is that this world is our home. That this world is our home. That this world is what matters. I'm going to read a verse of Scripture. Apostle Paul is writing to Philippian believers. He's talking about those who do not believe versus those who do believe. And this is what, what he said. He said, their mind is set on what? Earthly, Earthly things. What might matters now? What happens now, what I have now, what I wear now, what I drive now, where I live now, what happens now, my bank account, what happens now, there, that's what their mind is set on. Those are earthly things. But our citizenship, to the contrary, is where? In heaven. <clears throat> our citizenship is in heaven. It's not of this world. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. This world is not our home. This world is not our home. Now, imagine this. I'm sure you didn't think this was for Philip to help strum his guitar, but imagine <clears throat> this rope, <clears throat> that, it, that this rope is a timeline, and, and as far as it goes over to here, as far as, it go, as far as you can see, this is like eternity past, eternity past. God's always been here because he's, he's infinite. He's an infinite God. This is who our God is. He's always been. Now, now we die, right? 
This is eternity future. This is what happens in the future, right? Now, this is like the history of mankind. Right here, this is what that resists, res, represents is the history of mankind. This is why the Bible says that we appear for just a little while and then poof, we're gone, right? This, 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 this is a glimpse of humankind right here. So we have Adam right here. This was the beginning. God created Adam. He created Adam and he looked down and he saw Adam and he said, Adam, you don't look good. You need some help. And he created Eve and Adam saw Eve and he said, whoa, man, woman. And that's when we got woman, right? So Adam right here, fast forward to somewhere like right in here. Jesus is right here, right? Fast forward a little bit more. You got the Renaissance. You have Gutenberg and having, inventing the printing press. And he's got Bibles going out all over the place. And then you got the Reformation, Martin Luther. Then you got like, fast forward, the Industrial Revolution. You got World War I. You got the Great Depression. World War II. You got the 57 Chevy. You got... In November 1963, that's when Kennedy, uh, John F., JFK, was assassinated. I was born two months before that, believe it or not. And then we got you right here. That's you, a mist that appears for a little while, and then we're gone. And that's that. Now, if you're like me, here's the problem that I have. The problem that I have as I'm living right here, and I think it's all about the red, and, and I'm, not, I'm not too worried about this. I mean, that's the problem a lot of people have. They live for the here and now, right? And when things happen in the red, it just messes me up. It just, it just does, right? Oh, I'm running late again. Oh, something else broke at the house. Oh, they made fun of me. Oh, and, and I get so upset about what happens here. So I'm trying to live my life like the Apostle Paul said. There's three little Greek words in the, in, in the, in, in the book of Philippians, tiskar plan, tiskar plan. Can anybody say that? Tiskar plan. Tiskar plan. And where he used these words was that people were preaching Christ out of selfish gain and selfish ambition. And the Apostle Paul goes, Apostle Paul goes tiskar plan, tiskar plan. What's that mean? He's like, what does it matter if they're preaching Christ? They're preaching Christ. So maybe that will have some impact here. But as far as me, tisk our plan. So when things go bad here, I'm like, I want to live in the here and now by going, if it doesn't matter 100 years from now, it's not going to matter for eternity. So tisk our plan. Tisk our plan. But, but, this is what's important. This is what matters. So how do I want to live here if this is what matters? Well, it really does matter how I live here. So Tiskar plan, I'm not going to let all that other stuff that ends here just like take me away from it. But what matters here is what, what matters is how I love. What matters is how I give. What matters here is how I serve. What matters is how I'm able to speak life <clears throat> For, for eternity's sake. So if I'm living for the here and now, and all those things that bother me in the here and now, I need to tisk our plan. If it doesn't matter here, it shouldn't matter here. But, but, this is what matters. So how do I want to live here? I want to do the things here that will matter for eternity. Listen to what the Bible writer said in 2 Corinthians. For the things that we see now will soon be gone. What we see now will soon be gone. But the thing is that we cannot see. How long will they last? Forever. They will last. This world is not our home. We are just passing through the here and now. This is what is going to matter. And we need to live our lives for that which matters. What you believe about eternity really does change and affect how you live Today, today. So many misconceptions <clears throat> about heaven. Heaven's going to be boring. No, it's going to be the absence of evil and the presence of God. Oh, this world is our home. No, it's not. It's just a, uh, of what we're going to experience of the good of God in heaven. Now, there's a third misconception about heaven, 
And uh, there are so many people that believe this today. We saw it from the interview. Most people believe that they're going to go to heaven anyway. Most people just have that general belief that, hey, it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what, how, what I believe. No, none of this matters. I mean, good people are going to go to heaven, right? It's like the default destination. Like, it's like only the bad people are going to go to hell, right, not get into heaven. I mean, those people who, if I killed somebody, and if I did, they probably deserved it, but, but we're not even going to count that. You know, it's going to be, uh, I'm a drug dealer, just the bad of the bad, you know, the abusers, whatever. Heaven is not the default destination. <clears throat> we cannot forget what Jesus said. Look at this verse, Matthew 7, when he said this, wide, for wide, wide is the gate, broad is the road. Where does it lead to? Destruction. And how many people? <clears throat> many people enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to where? Life eternal. <clears throat> How many people find it? Few people find it. And the truth is, it's not good people that get you in it. You just, you're not good that, and that gets you into heaven. Forgiven people get into heaven. Forgiven people, by God's grace, that gets you into heaven. So I want to read several passages of Scripture and I want you just to internalize it. I want you to, to feel it. I want you to experience the sense of urgency in it when the Bible writer is talking about, it's not just the good person that gets into heaven, but this is what he writes about in Romans chapter three, beginning with verse 22. <clears throat> he said, we are made right with God by, by how? By how? By placing our faith in Jesus Christ, not, not by being good. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. So we can't be that bad, that bad not to, for God to be able to forgive us. <clears throat> now, it's talking about people who sin. How many people have sinned? Everyone has sinned. I've sinned, you've sinned, we've all sinned. And we, we all, every one of us, what do we do? We fall short of God's glorious standard. Uh, we, we just can't be good enough on our own to like get us into heaven. Uh, we're just not that good of people. I mean, uh, I did this like at Christmas time when I said, how many, how many of you ever told a lie? And we, you can raise your hand if you ever told a lie. Remember we looked around the room, we're not gonna do it today, but we looked around the room and pointed and people didn't have their hand up. We said, liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> but there's newer people with us today, so we're not gonna do all that. <clears throat> um, we asked, how, how many people have ever stolen something? I've stolen something. If you got a purse, you probably have an Oasis pin, you thief. Not everybody's raising their hand. No, you can take those home. It's okay. Um, if we come to understand the holiness of God, if we really grasp that, we're going to really sense and feel, we're going to be acutely aware of our sinfulness against a holy and just and, and loving God. We're, we're going to sense it. We all fall short of the standard. We're not good enough. <clears throat> but he goes on to say this. Yet God in his grace, somebody say that. Yet God in his grace, yet God in his grace, yet God in his grace, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. <clears throat> he says, for God presented Jesus as <clears throat> the sacrifice for sin. He was the sacrifice. People are made right with God when they believe when they believe that we call this the condition number one that we believe God sent his son and when we believe on that that God sent his son that, that Jesus is the way the truth and the life just like he told his disciples he's the way truth and life when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life shedding his blood now here's condition number two it, Paul calls it the, the benchmark of the gospel a few paragraphs later, when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him <clears throat> in his death, for we died and were buried with Christ by baptism, going down into that water. But look at this, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Because what you believe about eternity will change how we live today. Now, there are a couple of goals that I had for this entire message series. 
And, and goal number one was I just wanted to, to preach relief for those of us who are in Christ. That we can know, yeah, we, we should be good people. We should follow Jesus and be like Jesus. But I wanted us just to experience the relief that eternity is real, heaven is for real, and when we're in Christ, we don't have to worry about it when we close our eyes. We can be excited about all the glories that heaven has to offer. <clears throat> and then purpose <clears throat> number two, my second goal, was I wanted us to sense the urgency about this life. I wanted us to sense the urgency where, where we are right here and what matters most, to be able to share this good news of the gospel, not just to live for the here and now, but to live our life here and now in ways that matter, not just for myself and my family, but for everyone that God puts in my path for eternity. <clears throat> Would you stand with me as we close in prayer? <clears throat> he has set eternity in our hearts, the Bible writer says. Would you bow your head and, and pray with me? Father, I, <clears throat> I want to thank you that through the power of your word, the strength of your Holy Spirit, that you would change us even now to let us understand that this world is not our home, that we are just passing through, and what we do now matters for eternity for eternity, that we are just a mist that appears for a little while, and then it's done. Father, I pray that you would give us hearts that break for that which breaks your heart, that you would let us see people in need to, and help us to use us to help those people in need. Give us your sense of love and urgency that this life isn't gonna last forever, that we would tell others about your saving grace. And Father, I pray for those who felt the weight of, I don't know if I'm living a good enough life. I, I don't even feel that I'm worthy. I pray that you would lift that, to look, give us the freedom to know that yet by your grace, yet by your grace, that we are saved and that we can rely on your power and strength, not by my might, but by your power. Father, you've promised eternity for those who last and live for you. Father, I pray for those today. If there's one here who's just never stepped over that line of faith and that they realize it's not, oh, I can live however I want. I'm just going to slip into heaven. No, that, that they would feel the brunt and the truth of Scripture, that your Holy Spirit would speak to their heart, that they would step over the line of faith from death to life, that they would be able to, in the, in the dead state that they're in, that we know that sins cannot be forgiven. And Father, I pray that they would take that step to have their sins forgiven, that we would have the hope that no matter what, one day we're gonna see you face to face. I pray that each one of us would be able to see you in all your glory as we ponder <clears throat> eternity with you, that it would certainly change how we live today. We thank you for your truth. We thank you that we're not an accident. We thank you for your purposes. I pray that for each life today. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all the people said, amen and amen. So glad that you worship with us today. We're we're going to sing a, a praise to the Lord right now. Uh, we're going to receive an offering. If you have a, a card, an offering, put that in there afterward. If you need prayer for anything or, or need more information, we have our prayer table over here right after you're dismissed. Check out the groups and where to serve on the way out.
inside of me Lord I can't help but sing come on sing in faithful faithful you are Thank you for joining us here this morning. We pray you have a very blessed week. We'll see you back here next time.